What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review. And this time, we're going to be checking out True Romance, directed by Tony Scott and written by Quentin Tarantino. That's right. This is the only Quentin Tarantino movie that he wrote but did not direct. Uh, this movie does have that classic Tarantino vibe with the witty script and the, and the compelling characters, but also has that Tony Scott vibe with his directing style. So I'm going to try to make this review as brief as I can, not try and talk about it too much. But yeah, let's get this deep dive right into it. So my overall thoughts on True Romance, I think this is a great movie. Um, I think it's a, actually kind of an underrated movie. I don't really hear a lot of people talk about True Romance a lot, which is kind of uh, a shame. But this is one of the better movies to uh, come out in the 90s. And this is one of Tony Scott's of uh, better movies to me, that is, to me at least. Uh, now, being a Tarantino mark, of course, I love the, the characters and I love the script and I love the dialogue. And I like the interactions with all these characters as well. But to, for, to Tony Scott's credit, he took Tarantino's uh, script, but he made it his own. And this movie has that Tony Scott feel to it as well. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a twofer. It, you got that Tarantino, you got the Tarantino vibe, and you got that Tony Scott vibe. And two guys, the, when you and when you mesh these two guys together, you get it. You get a great movie like True Romance. You know what I'm saying? Like, break it down. The cast. The cast in this movie is fantastic. You got Christian Slater, who plays uh, Clarence Worsley. Um, he's a great. I like the character of Clarence. He's very, very likable. And I like the relationship he has with Alabama, played by Patricia Arquette. You know, Patricia Arquette plays a call girl who falls in love with Clarence, and then they get married. Then Clarence find then, you know, Clarence, not liking the way she was treated by her pimp, Drexel Spivey, played... So brilliantly over the top by uh, Gary Oldman. So pretty much Clarence goes to Drexel's hideout, shoots him, takes some stuff with him, took some drugs with him, and uh, they have to run off to California. But before they go to California, they make a quick stop at Clarence's dad's house, the dad being played by the great, late great Dennis Hopper himself. And then we're off the races from there. Of course, the mob event, with the people that... Drexel Spivey was involved with find out that Clarence was at the scene of the crime because Clarence left his license behind and we get that amazingly tense yet hysterical scene between uh, Christopher Walken and Dennis Hopper the Sicilian monologue scene which is hysterical if you've never seen it watch it on YouTube the scene is hilarious it's tense and hilarious all at the same time it's such a great scene I love it so much uh, that's another great and again Walken and Hopper and uh, Oldman these three guys they have very little screen time but they make the most of it like Walken makes the most out of this mob boss called Don Vincenzo Dennis Hopper makes the most out of playing uh, you know uh, Clarence's dad and with the dialogue and the scenes that they're in they make it all work and I love it and I love this movie for it, it, it these guys utilize they max out the, the small amount of screen time they got and you get memorable performances Love it. Can't say enough about it. You know, we also have a Brad Pitt sighting. This movie came out in 1993. So, you know, Seven was just two years away from being made. So this is Brad, this is Brad Pitt before he got big, before he struck big with uh, Seven. He plays a stoner guy who is a friend of a guy called Dick Ritchie, who's actually a friend of Clarence. So when Clarence goes to Hollywood, they got to interact with uh, his friend Dick, who was also in cahoots with uh, <laughs> this guy called Elliot, played by uh, Bron Superco, and Elliot is the guy who pretty much uh, Clarence is going to use as a uh, as a courier to get to this other guy called Lee Donowitz, so he can sell his drug, this drugs, get the money, and start a life for himself in Alabama. And in between all that, you have the mob going chasing after chasing after uh, Clarence in Alabama, who tracked them over down to California. We get this great scene between. Uh, Patricia Arquette and James Gandolfini, who plays one of the mob bosses, and Gandolfini just beats the piss out of Alabama in that scene. I mean, he destroys this woman, and then and the entire time, Alabama is just is just taking it and taking it and taking it until she fights back and kills him. It's a very brutal, intense scene, but it's so well done, and the acting is great. Now, Gandolfini comes across as just like this fucking disturbed prick, and you just can't wait for Alabama to to kill him because he's he's just so like overbearing. It's great stuff. Really great scene. Um, I also like the scenes with Tom Sizemore and uh, Chris Penn. They play two cops that Elliot 
ends up being in cahoots with because there's a scene where Elliot is driving, getting a blowjob, and the girl that was giving him a BJ, they get pulled over by the cops. She accidentally slaps the cocaine in Elliot's face, and he ends up being a rat. For, and he ends up being a rat. But the scenes with Chris Penn and Tom Sizemore is hilarious, especially in the elevator scene, which is a great scene, by the way. Uh, just Tom Sizemore's and Chris Penn's reactions to what Clarence could and will do to Elliot is hysterical. It goes from being, oh, he's not going to kill him, and then when you get to the end of the scene, they're like, holy shit, this guy's going to kill this guy. <laughs> it's this man. It's really, it's, it's, it's intense and it's funny. It's great stuff. It's so well handled. So yeah, like, this movie's got so many good things about it. That I, ha I found very few flaws with it. Oh, if I do have any flaws, yes. Would I like to see more of Gary Oldman as, as Jaxel Spivey? Yeah, sure. I would like to see maybe have Jaxel Spivey, you know, at, you know, in, you know, follow the mob guys to California himself as like a more of a personal revenge for Ellie taking his drugs, for, sorry, for Clarence taking his drugs and taking Alabama. Would I like to see more of uh, Christopher Walken and Dennis Hopper? Yeah, sure. But what I got from those three, I enjoyed immensely because this movie has got other things working for it. You got this beautiful, cute romance between the characters of Clarence and Alabama. You got Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette who are giving you outstanding performances. Their chemistry with one another is fantastic. And I truly buy them as just being this very loving couple. And I root, you root for them and you want them to make it out okay because you just can't help but like these two. They're so, they come across as just so likable, very charismatic performances. And you got a supporting cast that just makes them look that much better. So yes, True Romance to me is another fantastic movie. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I enjoyed this movie immensely. There's a lot more things I can talk about, like the Hans Zimmer score, which I think is brilliant. And a few other things in between. Those are just my broad, general thoughts on True Romance. Like I said, to me, this movie is a 9 out of 10. I enjoyed it immensely. It's a good Tony Scott movie, and it's a great Quentin Tarantino script. And when you put those two guys together, you get a great movie like True Romance. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Anyway, let me know what you thought about True Romance in the comment sections down below. Like this video and subscribe. And I'll check you back next time for more.